Tonight's presentation is going to be given to us by Morgan, Morgan Williams. Uh, Morgan is in California now, but he's uh, usually a Kansan living out there in the in God's country. And, and he's here in the rainy El Dorado Hills, I guess. Anyway, he's going to be talking about Dad Martin postcards and um, work that uh, that he did mostly in Kansas. So anyway, with all that being said, I am going to... So with that being said, I'm really happy to uh, introduce Morgan Williams, who's going to be our speaker tonight. Um, thank you, Morgan, for being with us, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to uh, visit with your club, uh, and I appreciate you contacting me. Uh, after I made a presentation to the Franklin County Historical Society in my hometown of Ottawa, Kansas. And you found out about that because of Hal Ottawa sharing with me uh, the postcard club list from Wichita. And you saw that. I would like to say that uh, <clears throat> I first met Hal Ottawa through political buttons. I was working in Washington for the U.S. Senator from Kansas, and I was collecting political buttons, and I, some way I got a hold of Hal, and Hal found out I was from Ottawa, Kansas. Ottawa is only 60 miles from Kansas City, southwest, and uh, only 20 miles, I guess, that uh, south of that great university, the University of Kansas, with their wonderful basketball teams, the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, and they beat Oklahoma last night in the last three minutes. It was a great basketball game. And, of course, they were the national champions last year. So we have to promote the Kansas uh, Jayhawks. But I met Hal Ottawa, and he's the first one, even though I grew up in Ottawa, Kansas, he was the first one that told me there was a photographer by the name of William H. Martin, nicknamed Dad. He was the first one that told me about that. I went to school with his great grandson, but nobody seemed to know much about around Ottawa. Nobody mentioned it to me, but Hal did. And I soon started collecting his postcards and got very interested in that. So why are we talking about William H. Dad Martin from Ottawa, Kansas? Number one, he was an outstanding photographer. It's amazing what all he did in photography. And secondly, from Ottawa, Kansas, maybe some of you know that Bert and Elmer Underwood of the famous Underwood and Underwood uh, Photographic Company grew up in Ottawa. They started selling stereo views in the 1890s door to door in Ottawa. And that led to them eventually creating the world's largest photographic company called Underwood and Underwood. They made millions of stereo views. And if you look carefully at the stereo views, every stereo view that they made says Ottawa, Kansas. It says London, New York, Toronto, and Ottawa, Kansas. Even though they ended up in New Jersey and had palaces to live in and ranches in Wyoming, they never forgot about Franklin County and Ottawa, Kansas. And Dad Martin, of course, knew them very well. He took photographs for them. He visited them in Wyoming. And so Ottawa, Kansas, to the photography field, contributed Dad Martin and the two Underwood brothers, again, who created the world's largest photographic company and brought the world to the living rooms of millions of people through their stereo views. And they went all over the world. Another reason for talking about Dad Martin, because he came to Ottawa in about 1887, just to be an apprentice to a well-known Ottawa photographer who took a lot of Indian photographs that are very collectible. Dad Martin then became kind of the standard, the usual photographer, and he went down to Oklahoma to the 101 Ranch. He took photographs for the Underwoods, but then all of a sudden in August, uh, 
uh, in August of uh, September of 1907, all of a sudden he started publishing what we call now exaggerated postcards. We have no idea why he started doing this. We have no idea where he got the idea, but another reason we're talking about him is because he has become known as the world's best creator of exaggerated images. He did about 65 of them. Then he did some for the postcard uh, company in Toronto, Canada, when he was closing down. And another thing is he made 8 million of them, one at a time in Ottawa, Kansas. He had about 25 ladies that worked for him. They brought in the tank loads of emulsion uh, by the tank load. And it's just amazing. And he only did it for three years. All of a sudden, he started creating them. All of a sudden, he quit and went into the highway sign business. So it's kind of an amazing story. And every one of his postcards, almost every one, is about hunting, fishing, and farming in Franklin County, Kansas. And if you know exaggeration postcards, most of them are about hunting, fishing, and farming. And most of them were by the photographers who lived in rural America or who lived from Texas to North Dakota and Minnesota. And it is interesting that the only real exaggerated postcards, not fantasy, but exaggerations, were all done in the United States, not around the world. And some of them were done in Canada, but Dad Martin, uh, we'll talk about that later. So we're talking about one of the world's best photographers. We're talking about the guy that created the world's best exaggerations, and he made more exaggerated postcards than anybody else in history. And if you watch them on eBay, you can see that, yeah, he did 8 million because 30 or 35 percent of all the exaggerations on eBay were made by Dad Martin and distributed by him and his connection to the Underwood and Underwood Company. So let's go to, uh, and I would like to say then that lots of folks, uh, thanks, lots of folks call them early surrealism. Uh, these were not made with the computer. They were made uh, out of his own imagination. And what I like about these, you know, so many postcards of churches, their city buildings, their, uh, you know, their railroad stations, they're just standard things that people photograph. Here, they had to create a brand new image. They came up with clever titles. Uh, they had to put together the image. So it wasn't just like photographing various things in your, uh, in your hometown and putting them out of the postcards. And I knew a surrealism art dealer in New York City. He collected them. He said, I am an expert in the world on surrealism paintings. I go to Paris, I deal a lot of them, and we consider these early surrealism. And he said, I buy them. I give them to all my friends in, in, uh, in uh, Paris. And I asked him one night in New York, at the New York Postcard Show, what is your definition of surrealism? He said, Morgan, it's that magic place where fantasy and reality touch. And so if you look at exaggeration postcards, there's a lot of that postcards that's, of course, reality. And some of it is fantasy. And so to me, there's a magic uh, about exaggeration postcards. And the best ones, of course, were all done from 1907 to about 1912. So let's go to the uh, screen, to the presentation. W.H. Uh, Dad Martin, photographer, Ottawa, Kansas. And I wanna spend my thanks to Shaw and uh, the San Jose Postcard Club for this opportunity to present the life and times of W.H. Dad Martin. Next. William Dad Martin was born in February of 1865 in Illinois. His family moved to Southern Kansas <clears throat> in about 1887. He moved to Ottawa, Kansas uh, and became an apprentice to a well-known Ottawa photographer. He became an amazing, innovative photographer, the world's champion creator and publisher 
of real photo postcards, highway sign manufacturing, and a philanthropist in Ottawa, Kansas. Uh, this is one of Dad Martin's calling cards. Uh, he first made this in about 1902, uh, but he used it later as a real photograph postcard. This is one of the only ones I know that was personally signed by him. And to show you that he had a great sense of humor, and he wanted to pull people's legs, and he wanted to play tricks on people, this is his photograph. He crossed his eyes. He has a funny smile. He combed his hair funny. And this is his dad's Civil War hat. And he would pass this out as his calling card. He was full of fun. He was full of humor. He was a prankster. He was perfect for creating exaggeration postcards. In the 1930s, this is the picture he took of himself. He created some mirrors and took this image of him lighting a pipe. This won several awards for photography was published on the front of a Kansas magazine. This is a self-portrait of Dad Martin in the 1930s. Here's one of his other calling cards, Martin, leading photographer. This is the picture of him in the 1930s. In the 1930s, he became a philanthropist. Here he's with, sitting with some people that he assisted in Franklin County in the 1930s. In the 1930s, he said he didn't want anybody in Franklin County, Kansas, to be cold or to be hungry. And we'll talk about that later. He passed out hundreds of thousands of dollars with the food, clothing, and always a huge pile of firewood on the courthouse steps for people in Franklin County. Here's a picture of him in the 1930s, Ottawa's Main Street, another one of his calling cards. Here's a photograph of him also in the 1930s. Uh, there were some other famous photographers in Ottawa who did CBDs and who did uh, the photographs of Indians. A lot of them bring two or three, four hundred dollars now. This is a uh, suspension bridge in Ottawa during a flood. Ottawa had many, many floods uh, until they put in flood control. Uh, there was a famous park in, in Ottawa that they did a lot of stereo views of and Martin did a lot of photographs of. There was a photographer by the name of Barker. He did this CBDs of Indians. These are the ones that bring two or three, four hundred dollars a piece now. And of course, if you know what a CDV is, it's very small. It's another one of Indians. This is uh, one of the guys that Martin learned photography from. Another one of the Indian ones. This is the main street of Ottawa, Kansas. And if you look over here on the left, you can see one of the, uh, it says photographs, land office and photographs. This was a photography office of Mr. Barker on the main street. Next. Just cards from the 1890s, 1900s. Uh, stereo view of Ottawa. Martin got in in 1890 with a guy by the name of Gilkey, who didn't last very long. But this is the first photograph that I have by Dad Martin. It was taken in 1890 of a guy by the name of Frank Dean in a partnership that Dad Martin had with Mr. Gilkey. Here's one by Dad Martin, 1891. This is the, the graduating class of Baker University, which is only about 15 miles from Ottawa. Uh, this is by Dad Martin, 1890s, Three Hunters. This is Drummer Boy by Dad Martin. You can see he was kind of a standard uh, photographer uh, that did uh, graduating classes and weddings, bicycles. This is by Dad Martin. This is a famous house in Ottawa. Uh, this is a four-year-old girl that Martin did a cabinet photograph of. This is a baseball team in 1894. This is by Dad Martin, one of the best cabinet photos I have by him. There was a major fire of an auditorium in 1895. Martin went to the fire and made a lot of cabinet photographs of the fire. Uh, this is, Ottawa had Forest Park. They had those huge Chautauqua meetings there, and people would come all over from the Midwest. This was a group from Arkansas City that went to the Ottawa Chautauqua. 
on the back of it, it says Martin Photographer. Now, this is one of Martin's ads in the Ottawa University Annual in 1895. Take a look at this. He's got Martin in all kinds of type styles. He's got him upside down. It's one of his uh, first very humorous ads that I found. Here's another ad by Martin. Look at this. There's cobwebs in the corners. Martin is upside down. Uh, another example, early example of his humor. In 1899, there was the Spanish-American War. There was a company from Franklin County, Kansas. When they came back, there was a major parade. Martin took photographs of the parade. This is one of them. Another photograph of the parade, 1899. Now, this is a full-page ad in the Ottawa campus. There's that picture of Martin. They said, this is Dad Martin. He's been arrested for hunting. He's a fool about farming and fishing. He's wise on photography. That's another one of his clever ads. This is an Underwood and Underwood st stereo from their hometown of Ottawa, Kansas. And you look over here, it says Ottawa, Kansas, Toronto, Canada, London. Uh, this is a brochure about the Underwood and Underwood stereo stereographs. Uh, this is an Underwood st stereo of two ladies in Forest Park in Ottawa, Kansas. Martin went to Oklahoma and took photographs of Indians in uh, a ranch in Oklahoma, a uh, reservation. They ended up on Underwood and Underwood stereos. Most people don't know that. This is a Martin photograph. Later, he put out as a postcard of Indians in Indian territory in Oklahoma for the Underwood and Underwood Company. This is another uh, Indian photograph that Martin took about 1901. He put it out as a photograph postcard in 1909. This is another photograph by Dad Martin for Underwood and Underwood. He also put it out as a photograph as a postcard. This is the postcard of Indian chief and family by Dad Martin in 1909. He did postcards about Indians. He did postcards about Ottawa. He did postcards about exaggerations. So another image by Dad Martin, 1901. This actually says 1900. This is the uh, postcard by Dad Martin, which are very, very collectible. He did about 25 of these Indian postcards. This is another crazy snake ready for the charge on Oklahoma settlers put on their 1908. That's when he made it into a postcard. The four greatest chiefs now living, Martin postcard, very collectible. Ottawa had many, many floods. Martin took pictures of the floods, made booklets, and made uh, cabinet cards. This is a cabinet card, downtown Ottawa, Kansas, Merizine River. This is the first ad ever for a Martin exaggeration postcard. The 10 cent store in Ottawa. Mr. Grover was the proprietor. It says here, go to the 10 cent store for Dad Martin's views. There's no secret how these cards are made. He used a simplified developer. We don't know what that is. Uh, we have them on sale Saturday morning. Watermelons, corn, potatoes, and pumpkins. This is February the 18th, 1908, the first day that Martin's postcards went on sale. Here's one of the first four postcards Martin ever made. Uh, you see the horses? You see the dried ear of corn, some people call it an Indian ear. He has two men on the top. Uh, all the people in his cards were friends of his in Ottawa. A lot of them were his businessmen friends. A lot of these were made in the park. It wasn't very long before he didn't like this Indian ear of corn, so he changed it. He changed it to a regular ear of corn. The ones with the dried ear of corn are very, very rare. If you find this dried ear of corn, uh, it's very, very rare and one of the most famous that he made. This is the one that he made probably 25 or 50,000 of. You can find many of them, but you can't find them with this sign back there. He uh, kind of thought he could get this Warner Wonder Washer company to, to buy his postcards, and he put his sign in just a very few of them. If you ever see that one DeWarsher sign, and he's one of his cards, you better grab it. 
here's another image that uh, this is the one that he uh, that he made so many thousands of and became quite famous and very very popular and then of course people from Kansas would send this here this card to their friends in in Iowa and said well sorry we couldn't send you a better the image of corn but we had a drought in Kansas this year this was a card that was used all over the United States and people sending it to other people and writing fun images on the back, which are very interesting. This is the first one he made using cabbage. This guy clear over on the left with the suspenders, he shows up in many Martin postcards. He was a leading Ottawa businessman. And if you look at this, right under the wagon, you can see the slats on the wagon. But yet you got all the cabbages up there. And if that photograph was real, you couldn't see the slats underneath. Martin soon realized that and changed it. He only changed about five of his cards. Now look underneath there. It's a shadow, it's square. But this is the only one he changed twice. He said, wait a minute, that wouldn't be right. There's cabbages on that wagon. So then he changed it. Now look under the shadow. The shadows look like they're curved like the cabbage. This one is the one that's quite, uh, he made thousands of these. The one that shows the slats, you better grab one of those. They're very, very, very rare. A huge manufacturing and plant in uh, Ottawa was called Warner Manufacturing. This is one of the first images he made in September. He went to the Franklin County Fair in early, se in early September. 15 days later, he started making these cards. He took this, uh, the background there with the water fence company. He took that and then he added the corn. This is one of the first four. And then he changed the sign. If you see one with Warner fence, they're hard to find. Then he changed the sign to County Fair. This is the one that you can see that he made thousands of. Uh, and see how they dress back in their hats. This is Ottawa, Kansas. All these were taken in Franklin County, farming, fishing, and hunting. And those were the three subjects of most exaggerations. This is the first one he made of potatoes. This was one of the first four he made. If you look at the reins up there, they're circular on that potato right below the guy's hands. He didn't like that, so he changed it. Look at the next photo. Next photo, the reins come straight down. The ones that are the first he made in the first month, they're very rare. He only made those first ones about a month and then he changed them. Here's pumpkins. So they were corn, pumpkins, cabbage, uh, watermelons. This one has 300 carved in it here for 300 pounds. It has Kansas down here. And then the one, next ones he made, he took out the 300 and took out <laughs> Kansas. This became one of his most popular images thousands of them he made but not this one with the 300 there this is here no 300 no kansas down here this is one of his uh, he made thousands of these and they marketed them all over the country we'll talk about that in just a minute here's watermelons this guy shows up in many of his cards here you got four large large watermelons they were so heavy they broke down the wagon and the wagon broke is a horse drawn wagon. This became one of his most popular cards. Here you have uh, uh, a famous Buick uh, chasing a rabbit. And then there's other cars back here. And this guy that's holding the reins back here, that's that same guy who was one of his businessmen friends that he went fishing with. And look at this lasso. The lasso's over his head. Martin looked at that. He said, wait a minute, we can't have the lasso over his head. This card with the lasso, I only know about six of them. This one with the lasso over his head. If you find one of those, you might grab it. There's only about six or seven of them around. Now look at the lasso. It's down over the rabbit's head. This became very famous. Buick dealers would buy them and put their name on them. Car collectors would buy them. It uh, became a very famous card chasing the rabbit okay now we got corn we got cabbage uh 
we got a pile of cabbage, we got a pile of pumpkins, we got corn, we got a corn on the wagon, bringing in the sheaves. Okay, now we're going to mules. Uh, I don't know where this barn is. I've been trying to find somebody that knows where this barn is. There's two people in the wagon, there's a little girl here. And this is the kind of mules we raise in Kansas. We're gonna show you another picture of this, where everything is the same except it says horses. It's amazing how he changed it. There it is, horses. It's the same barn, the same image. Everything is exactly the same, except here you got horses and there you got mules. And this was made only for the Toronto Postcard Company. Uh, as Martin was closing down, he wasn't making any more uh, to put in the United States. Now we go to sweet potatoes. Here's this same guy that was in the watermelon card a while ago. He's one guy we haven't been able to identify. But here are the sweet potatoes are so big, of course, they broke down the wagon. Okay, now we got cucumbers. It's interesting. He made this for the Canadian Postcard Company as he was closing down in 1910. That's the same guy, but on the wagon, you've got cucumbers uh, and not sweet potatoes. Everything else is exactly the same. And you see how he put the images together. Uh, the, it's not really cut and paste. We're not sure how he did it, but it's so much better. So, and every one of his postcards that ever put out was as sharp as you can make them, clear black and white. You know how many bad real photo postcards out there where people didn't know what to do, but every one of Dad Martin's is 100%. It's just amazing. Okay, now this is a, 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 a company that was selling them in Canada for the Canadian Postcard Company. They say they have 36 designs and the price is only $3 per hundred. Uh, that's amazing. They, he sold them for three, well, Martin sold them for cheaper than that. This guy was selling them uh, as a wholesaler for $3 per hundred. How can we buy them for $3 a hundred? What are the prices? Some of his cars like this one. Uh, President Taft came on a train trip to Kansas on his way to Colorado and to the West. He stopped at Topeka in, in uh, October 1908 campaigning. Martin went up there and took some pictures. This is one, you got the crowd there, you got apples and you got peaches and he put Martin standing at peaches. His troop, his trip moved more fruit. He made a second one that will show, but well, he must not have liked this one because he made tens of thousands of the other ones, but he didn't make these. There's probably not more than 10 or 12 of these around. If you find one of these, you should buy it. Martin, through the Underwood and Underwood Company, who had photographers on the train, he got these cards uh, to them on the train by the time they got to Denver, and they were passed out on the train, and they were passed to President Taft. There's articles in the paper about this, and President Traff and his, his whole entourage were very amazed to find these postcards uh, of, his, of his stop in, in uh, Topeka made by uh, Dad Martin. So this postcard, his truth board proof, is an amazing card, a presidential card during a campaign. Maybe 10, 12 of them exist. Here's the one that he made thousands of. This is his train. And here you have cabbages, corn, potatoes, and onions. It's called prosperity. The way we welcome Taft in Kansas, prosperity. Of course, presidential collectors collect these. A lot of uh, non-exaggeration collectors collect these ones uh, with President Taft. This is the only postcard I know signed by Dad Martin. It's a part of my collection. It's Ottawa, Kansas, October 1908. He sent it to a postcard dealer in Osage City, Kansas. It's signed by Dad Martin. It said, this Taft card just made, issued, price and uh, $13, $3 a hundred or $25 a thousand. Send cash or bank reference, signed W.H. Martin. Ottawa, Kansas.
I don't know of any other postcard by anybody that's signed by Dad Martin uh, in October 1980 or ever signed by him. Only three, you could buy them for $3 a hundred or $25 for a thousand real photo postcards, all made one at a time in Ottawa, Kansas. This is the only postcard that I know in existence of this. This is a Martin Postcard Company employee picnic. This is Dad Martin over on the right with the vest and the white shirt. That's him. These are all the people that work for him. This is this was sent by a lady who's in that picture. This is the only one I know of the picnic and and shows Dad Martin there on the right. This is a part of my collection. This is the lady that sent it. Her name was Catherine. We know Catherine Harrington. We looked in the Ottawa directory and we were able to find out who this was. She says, can you find my homely face? You surely can't miss it. Ottawa, Kansas, December 1908 was mailed to Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. It's the only postcard I've ever seen mailed by a person who was in that picture. And it's the only postcard I know of that shows the picnic. This is a blow up of Dad Martin in 1909. Uh, taken from that postcard. If you have any questions, uh, go to the chat line. This is the only people, piece of paper of North American Postcard Company. A few people from Ottawa, Kansas, and a couple people from uh, Underwood and Underwood went to Kansas City and started the North American Postcard Company to be a distributor of Martin cards. He didn't have any time to distribute the cards and do all of that. He was busy making cards and producing them. They say on this piece of stationery in 1910 that they're the largest publishers of genuine photograph souvenir postcards in the world. These Mr. Follis and Mr. Jones were from Ottawa, Kansas, and Mr. Berryman was a uh, was, was married to the Wonderwood sister. He was their brother-in-law. This is a North American postcard company stationery. I found it at a paper show in Pennsylvania a long time ago. I've never found another one. This company only lasted one year, which is kind of interesting. And then Martin, it went bankrupt because uh, this Mr. Fallis went bankrupt. So this is the North American postcard company that is on the back of most all of Martin cards. They didn't make any cards, they only sold. Here's the top of the piece of paper. Souvenir postcards only, Kansas City. And this is why he was able to distribute 8 million of them across the United States, because they knew how to do it because of the Underwoods. Okay, this is one of his most famous photographs. As Hal Ottaway can, can tell you, Hal, where was the, the capital of Oklahoma? Muskogee? No, no, it was in, it was in uh, Guthrie, Morgan. Guthrie. Guthrie, Guthrie, Oklahoma, just south of Oklahoma. No, I'm sorry, just north of Oklahoma City. Yeah, for some reason, the capital of Oklahoma was in Guthrie. There was a lot of people that wanted to move it to Oklahoma City, so they had a big campaign uh, to move it to Oklahoma City. And uh, this Johnson and Wimson company in Oklahoma City got a hold of Dad Martin and said, "We want a photo. We want a postcard." to pass out advertising that we want to move the capital to uh, Oklahoma City. This says after 1930, 13, my new address will be Oklahoma City. It's got the other, their name on it, but this is by Dad Martin. And guess what capital building is? This is the capital of Kansas. This is the capital of Kansas in Topeka, Kansas. Martin took a photograph of the capital, put it on four wagons, and these are all of his friends that are pulling this card. And this is this one guy in the front that shows up on many, many of his cards. We know who all these people are. And this is a very collectible card. It's pretty rare. People uh, in Oklahoma uh, bought these, put the, their business on it, and passed them out to show that they were, most of them, all, of course, were from Oklahoma City. And then the Oklahoma City won the campaign. And of course, Oklahoma City became the capital of. Uh, so this is a very uh, attractive postcard. It's a very rare. 
a lot of political collectors uh, like to have a lot of Oklahoma collectors. Uh, you, I don't see any kind of a card like this anyplace else. And of course, they didn't move the capital <laughs> very many places. So this is about the movement of the capital of Oklahoma City after a major election. Grab one of those. I got a hold of one of the ancestors of the Underwoods because they own big ranches up in up in uh, Wyoming. And I got a hold of them in the 1980s and I asked them if they had any Martin postcards. The one guy who was the grandson, he sent me this one in the mail. And if you talk about being excited, I was when I opened this up. This is digging onions. There's only two of these, three, maybe three. There's only three of these in existence. Martin, I guess, didn't like this card. You've got two ladies here. You've got a man and you've got another guy with a big uh, stick trying to dig these onions. This is the rarest of all Martin exaggerations. I got this one from the, the grandson or the great-grandson of the Underwoods. The Underwoods had these huge mansions in New Jersey. They had a pool room in one of them, and around the pool room were blown up images of Martins. That, that were, they were the only decoration in the room were blown up of Martin's exaggerations. So if you find a digging onions, grab it and send it to me. I'll be excited when I open up the mail. Okay, Martin went to Colorado some, and he took pictures in Colorado. This says hauling sugar beets in Colorado. This is about the only exaggeration I know of that shows sugar beets. And it says on there, hauling sugar beets in Colorado, 1909. Okay, here's one that would not be politically correct today. Uh, he had two images like this. Uh, if you just look at the skill of putting this together, uh, it, there's a lot of skill in putting this together. You have the girl in the window, you have the door, you have the porch, the broom, the lady, and two men, and this onion, I mean this watermelon, and the, take it in the watermelon patch. This is the Kansas bungalow put out in 1909. Here's the other one he put out. This isn't a watermelon patch. It shows two uh, African-Americans with a with a saw to cut down a tree and a wagon there and uh, African-Americans standing around carving one of our watermelons. There's a lot of skill in putting this together. You see the uh, place where they carved it, but you see the saw and they've already cut off two slices. The skill in putting this together and blending all that together. This is the one I like, angling for bullfrogs. He made two pictures of this guy trying to catch bullfrogs. This is another very rare one. There may be only 15 or less of these two bullfrogs. This is not one that he made to uh, market around the United States. He just made a few of them and passed them out locally. Again, angling for bullfrogs, uh, 1910. The last ones he made were in 1910. He only made them in 1908, 1909, 1910. Here's one called, Oh You, Mr. Bullfrog. Then again, there's probably 15 or less of the two of the bullfrogs. Over here, you got a guy with a gun shooting them. Martin was very varied in the number of images and the kind of uh, animals and everything that he used. Strawberries. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, Hewitt Evans Fruit Company. See that wagon? That was actually a fruit company in Ottawa, Kansas. And the son of these guys actually was a Chevrolet dealer in Ottawa when I was growing up. Just look and look at them over here in these crates, how they got them in the crate, uh, how they have them on here. And the guy's taking one of them off and they misspelled crating up here. And if you look at the handwriting on Martin cards, all of the handwriting on Martin cards is the same. And you won't find this handwriting anywhere else. And it's very nice handwriting. It's very clear. It's very sharp and it's very professional. We don't know yet who wrote on all of the Martin cards. Now this is one, uh, this is one that most all your photographic museums in back east will use this one 
in their photograph collections and that they have something about Dad Martin. This may be the most complicated card he created. Look over on the right, there's a pile of peaches. Then you look at this tub, then there's a peach in there. Then there's two guys. And then you got a, a heating unit back here. And then you got a, this uh, wedge here. And then you got these ice tongs with a peach. And then you got a guy trying to poke it into this jar. And then inside the jar, a ball jar, you got a peach. Down here, you got the rings. Over here, you got the lids. Over here, you have two more jars full of peaches. The top photographic experts that I've talked to, they don't know quite how he made this. You know, how did he put this all together? It's not your common cut and paste like most exaggerations. It's just amazing. Uh, you'll find this uh, in most all photograph uh, museums in their collections as an example of fantastic uh, work. He had to, of course, he had to take all these various images. He had to figure out how to put them all together. He had to make it all fit. This is just a world-class, amazing, amazing exaggeration postcard. Okay, now one of them made only for Canada. This is called a spill of wheat. But for those of you who don't know, those are wheat hole, sweet seeds. Uh, they were in that wagon, the wagon fell over, and there was a guy that try, got covered up trying to get out over here. This is also a very, very rare card. For some reason, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or less of these cards that I'm aware of, only put out in Canada in 1911, the year Martin shut down. Okay, this is in Ottawa, Kansas. This is the front of the high school, real horseshoe pitching in Kansas. So uh, it's another, another tribute, another first for Kansas to have horseshoe pitching like this. He's got a peg in here that he put three large horse, horseshoes. These are all his friends in the high school yard. Okay, this is a uh, salesman sample of uh, a card from uh, Canada. Uh, this is one with wool producers. Uh, here's that guy that was by the cucumbers and by the watermelon. Here's a dog, some small sheep. Uh, this is on a farm. Uh, wool producers. Uh, here's Colorado apples. Another one from Colorado. This is again one of the rarest. I only know of six of these. No more. If you ever find a Colorado apples, uh, you better grab it. Uh, the, the, the look at the ladies' hairdos, these boxes are all from Colorado. And the uh, big pile of apples there between the apple trees. A very rare specimen, but very, very uh, complicated, very creative, very uh, uh, professional. Okay, then he made some ones with fish. Remember, farming, fishing, hunting. Silver makes the best bait. Here's the guys trading some coins for some fish. Uh, this is Martin's two friends. This is called a pair of a pair of hungry pike. This one pike is cutting off this guy's leg, kind of bloody. Martin always also had some with hogs. This says good corn makes good hogs. And look at all the complicated parts of this. There's a wagon back there with a huge hog. There's these huge ear of corns. There's a uh, log saw down there cutting an ear of corn. There's a guy over the right picking up some of the uh, pieces of corn. Uh, there's a guy on that wagon back there. There's fine. It's a great card, very complicated. Other people couldn't make them like this. She wanted to go back to the apples card. She wanted to know why some of the boxes were upside down. Well, I don't know. The ones, the, the ones there, at the, they're all upside down. That's the way they're filling up. Then they would nail a, a wood, wooden top on them. I'm not sure. The ones up here on the top on the wagon, they're all right side up. You know, I really don't know. I hadn't really noticed that. We'll have to check that. Okay, here's a pumpkin of powerful growth. Here you got a, a probably a hog barn or a, a cow barn. And you got, yeah, probably cattle. You got cattle down here in front. And you got a big farmhouse back here. and the. Uh, Pumpkins grew so fast and so big, they lifted up this barn. Very complicated. Okay, here's 
we always brag about Kansas is a wheat state. Uh, I, I, I take this image with me all over the world to show people what Kansas wheat looks like. And of course, they're using ropes to lasso it. It's so tall. And then you got these four guys. Then you got a boy here, maybe with a water can. But this is harvesting wheat in Kansas. There's a few others with wheat, but nothing quite as good and complicated as this one. Okay, here's another one on the Meridazine River in Ottawa. Great sport fishing here. There's 10 fish there in the water. Okay, next, go back to the rabbits. Now here's one that's called Salted. You've got the guy with his shotgun, his boots, and it's uh, with this rabbit called Salted, of course, during the winter time. And you can find different versions of those uh, prints there in the snow. I don't know why there's different ones, but there are. And you can see the salt coming out of the salt shaker. Okay, this is a Santa Fe freight office in Ottawa, Kansas. Here's a guy loading tomatoes for shipment. And of course, he's got that two wheel uh, there that was used for luggage. And he's putting those rabbits, I mean, uh, tomatoes there on that wagon. Later, he changed the uh, freight office and took Santa Fe off of it. And this became a card that he distributed uh, nationwide about tomatoes, but without the Santa Fe from Ottawa. Okay, here's the way we raised tomatoes. And uh, people, people could buy, he put out some of these cards from different states. The ways we raised to potatoes in Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, most all of them from the Midwest. This is kind of an amazing photo too. You got the guy on the ladder, the guy on the ground, the little boy on the right. You got tomatoes on the ground. This is a very, uh, uh, I don't know of any other card with a ladder shown on tomatoes. A lot of his images uh, were just never reproduced. Uh, too complicated. Next, they had to take all those individual different photographs. Here's gathering corn in our country. The guy standing up on a big stalk of corn with a saw and the, the corn is so large and the ear is so large you have to cut them with a saw. Okay, now we're going to poultry. And here he's got a load of fancy poultry. They're on a scales. Take a look at how you would put this card together. He's got the wagon. He's got, uh, uh, you know, four chickens up there, guy driving it, and two, two people over here at the scales, a load of fancy poultry. So now they're a uh, uh, farm, you know, sheep and cattle and chickens and uh, pigs, <laughs> others. Okay, now this is uh, what we consider an autom automobile at the time. We know who all these people are. There's a little girl on a running board. There's a little, a little boy or girl on the, in the lady's lap and the guy's driving it on the right side. You've got a milk can, you've got a potato in the back and you've got eggs, the modern farmer. A few years ago, I got a call from National Geographic magazine. They said they were doing a whole magazine on immigrants. And he said, you know, they look, take a look at their photographic file they said well, they were looking for a photograph that probably clearly showed what immigrants' idea or concept was of the American farmer and his prosperity. They said they found this postcard. They traced it back to me and wanted to know if they could use it. So I made a deal with them, and they used this postcard in the National Geographic magazine as the best example they could find of what immigrants thought of the modern farmer. The latest model car, all the prosperity of eggs and potatoes and milk and all these things. Look how fast it was going in the dust. So this, uh, again, is one of his most popular cards. He made a lot of these. You can find them. It's just a fantastic image. And it was, uh, the National Geographic just was amazed once they found it and traced it back to me. Now, this is the main street of Ottawa, Kansas, put out by Martin. Okay, when he went down to the 101 Ranch, if you know, the 101 Ranch was the world's largest early dude ranch. Amazing, the Miller Brothers in Oklahoma, 
it was huge. They had farming and they put on all these big shows with Indians and cowboys and uh, uh, I don't know. It just was a fantastic place. Magicians, everybody, all kinds of uh, acts and shows. But there were a lot of Indians that lived down there, including Geronimo. And they put on shows down there. And this became, uh, they didn't put on shows all over the world. And it was the largest, uh, I don't know what I call it, dude ranch. What do you call it, Hal? You know what they call the 101 Ranch? Do they have a special name for it? Well, they they certainly had uh, their shows, like you say. They they buddied up with uh, Buffalo Bill several times, also with Pawnee Bill. And uh, I think one of you may be going to tell about this. I hope I don't want to steal your thunder. But when they were in England, when World War I started, all of their horses were confiscated by the government and sent to France to use in the war. And so without horses, this cowboy, this Indian show, they had to limp back to America on board ships. And, you know, until they got horses again, uh, their show time was... Uh, limited and probably more just back there at the ranch but uh, they were certainly impacted by the start of world war one when all of their horses got to uh, come not confiscated but taken they were uh, the government stepped in and they needed them so I'll, that's all my story <laughs> yeah martin, uh, martin had about 30 indian cards some of them were taken about 1901 on a reservation, and the rest of them were taken at the 101 Ranch. And if you look up here, right before the word copyright, it says 101, uh, before all the ones he took at the 101 Ranch. And that thing was huge. The shows they had down there were just amazing and fantastic. And they brought in uh, acts from all over the world and, and also went to Europe. It was just an amazing uh, uh, show place that they had down there and attracted people from all over the world. And the Martin cards from the 101 Ranch are, and then there was another guy from, by the name of Corwin from Ark City that did some, but his were Allard type. Martin's were real photographs, and they are very much in demand by Indian collectors. And here's, he had two of them showing Geronimo, and these are very attractive for Indian collectors because Geronimo lived down there on that ranch and uh, the U.S. Marshals watched him and there were a lot of Indians that lived down there and of course they put on these big shows down there. This was published in 1909 uh, by Martin uh, with uh, showing Geronimo and all in full dress. This is probably the most famous postcard of Geronimo there is. This shows him down on the 101 ranch by Dad Martin in an Indian blanket. Now, this is very, very collectible. There's quite a few of them out there. It, he was a prisoner down there, and uh, there are some that show him with with the guards by the guy uh, in our in our Kansas City. Uh, yeah, back there. Uh, yeah, this is one of the most famous photographs. The two of them there are all collected, of course, by Geronimo collectors. Okay, here's one that shows a cowboy and two Indians and they're trading using sign language by Martin. Uh, he went out to the Garden of the Gods. He made quite a few trips to Colorado. He copyrighted, I went to the Library of Congress, made copies of all of his copyrights. He copyrighted all of his cards, or most of them. He copyrighted 10 cards from Garden of the Gods. Newspaper articles say he made them and was gonna distribute them. Only, uh, I think, five of them have ever been found. And uh, there's only like two of the, each ones that's ever been found. This is one from my collection, Siamese Twins. If you ever find any Garden of the Gods by Martin, grab them quick. The reason we know a lot about these things is because, of, as you know, the local papers always wrote a lot about Martin 
when he went to Colorado or when he went to the 101 Ranch or when he, there's a lot of early articles about his exaggeration cards. It's amazing the documentation we've been able to find about him because, again, never found one piece of paper that says Martin Postcard Company. We've only found one that said North American Postcard Company. We never found any writings, no stationery, nothing. So we don't have, but when you add the Ottawa papers to it, we know so much about him and his travels. Here's another one of Garden of the Gods uh, Gateway. Find a lot of po postcards of the Gateway, but this is the only one by Martin. Okay, he also went down to the uh, San Luis Valley in Colorado. And he, he made about 60, 70 images down there. They got the Martin handwriting on them. He must have thought he was going to sell them to some land company because he didn't produce them except maybe two of each. I have about 60 different ones, uh, the only collection of them I know about, uh, showing farming scenes in the San Luis Valley in 1908, 1909. And the San Luis Valley was a promoting themselves big time in Kansas and Missouri. And one of the big promoters of land in San Luis Valley lived in Ottawa, Kansas. Here's another one from San Luis Valley that also almost looks like it's exaggerated, but it's not. And you look over on the left, it's the Martin handwriting. San Luis Valley, Colorado, cabbage. We found some published by the North American Postcard Company with the Martin handwriting. It doesn't say Martin. We have about 12 different ones to have the Martin handwriting on them. And we know Martin went out there to visit the Underwoods at some of their big ranches in Wyoming around Torrey Lake. So uh, we know this is by Martin because it's got the handwriting on it. That person was in Ottawa, Kansas, and it has North American Postcard Company in the back. So that, here's that guy cutting corn. Here's, here's, here's geese. Here's taking our geese to market. Uh, we're going to change this to a better one. It's, we got sharp back and white copies, but this is an amazing showing the geese. And there's an African American up here in the front. Okay, here's the corn that grew so big. It fell over on the barn. It's got a horse there. It's got some cattle. The land of big corn. I wish we had time for all the funny messages on the back. Maybe next time. People use these to poke fun at their friends and neighbors all around about fishing and farming and hunting. This is Nebraska. Okay, here's that great friend of his down here in front. And one of them's up here. It says, they're after me. Their boat uh, got sunk by these fish. There's another guy sitting over here with his head on the right side. Try putting some of these together like he did. See how duplicate how hard they are, 1911. Okay, we'll wrap up here. The bass I count. There was a, two guys back here on a, some kind of boats got caught by this bass and being pulled through the water. Here's the bass I caught. This is one of the ones he made thousands of. And this is his good friend here, the bald headed guy that was pulling the capital, Kansas, pouring water on his head, it's so hot. Landing a good one. I caught these myself, by myself. And now this is a, this is one that people like. The guy's riding this uh, fish and got an ax. I finally got him. And every one of them has, it's the only one that has them, this mark like that in there. And one over on the left side. I don't know why the, how those got on there. Oh, here's the daddy of all the pike. This became quite famous too with fishermen and others. Here's a guy in a boat and they're rowing the boat. Got this fish on there. The daddy of all the pike. And of course the two guys. What's interesting is how many people wore suits back then. I've got all kinds of pictures of people out at harvesting with their farms and they all got a suit on and a hat and a tie. Here we got two guys supposed to be out fishing like that. And uh, it's, a, it's amazing how many photographs of rural America you can find in where people are working and they've got suits on and ties and hats. Okay, now we got ducks. 
Boy, this is a good day for ducks, says Iowa. You can find that, Kansas, Nebraska, others. Okay, now we go to 1930. The Depression hits. Dad Martin has formed a sign company. Down here is the signs. He started this thing where he made small signs. The farmer would put him put them at the highway. It says eggs, 10 cents a dozen. Or a corn, uh, so much. Uh, and he made thousands of those. He started a sign company in Ottawa. And from 1912 to uh, when he died in 1940, he ran a sign company, made all kinds of highway signs. But like I said, in 1908, suddenly he started manufacturing exaggerated cards. 1911, he quit. He sold everything he had left to a, to a postcard salesman in Davenport, Iowa, went into the sign business, never made another postcard, never made another image. He became a humanitarian. Uh, as I told you, this is an article about him in 1935 about a successful sign manufacturer is now the president of the Down and Alters Club. I told you he had farms that he had bought. All the food from his farms he gave away. He bought wood. There was never not wood on the courthouse yard for people to pick up. A clothing manufacturer uh, went bankrupt. He went there and bought everything that the guy had. 20,000 coats he bought for over $100,000 back then and gave them away. And this is an article about Dad Martin and his becoming a uh, humanitarian, as we would say now, and his work in Ottawa, Kansas. And again, it's hard to read this without having a compassion for this guy. He became a world-class photographer. He became a class, world-class artist creating new images. He became the uh, creator and manufacturer of a very successful, innovative sign company. And he became a world-class humanitarian. And this article was from the Kansas Business Magazine. And it's, it's just hard not to read this and think how much of this guy. And down here, he says he wanted to be Christmas all year round. And he wanted, again, nobody hungry, nobody uh, cold in his county. And it's amazing what he did. He brought in truckloads of dairy products, truckloads of vegetables. He brought in carloads of stuff. He went around and bought, like I said, he bought out this one clothing manufacturer. And just one part of it was 20,000 winter coats that he bought. He died then in 1940 in Ottawa, Kansas. This is about his, uh, this is a newspaper article about Death Takes Dad Martin's old time photographer organized the national sign company. It was called the Martin Sign Company to begin with. And this is his photo. So there you have the story of Dad Martin, a kid growing, born in Illinois, came to Kansas, became an apprentice at age, age 18. By 20 or 22, he had his own postcard business, he was very successful and worked for the world's largest photographic company. And uh, they, uh, they then, there are people that helped market his cards and uh, he made 8 million of them one at a time, which is amazing. He created 60 images known as the best in the world, known as the best early uh, surrealistic uh, photograph uh, of real postcards. So there you have the life and times of Dad Martin and the reason we talk about him and most people in the postcard business know what a Dad Martin exaggeration postcard is. So we'll be glad to, uh, I know we've used up quite a bit of time here, but if there's a few questions and, and if, uh, if Shaw would let us, we could take a few questions. Absolutely. Some of you mentioned my signs in the back. I grew up in Ottawa, Kansas. Ottawa's an Indian name. There's Ottawa, here's an Indian. Land of Oz, you know, of course the Oz movie, Kansas, Kansas is the home of Miss America. 
I was going to ask you a question, if I may, that I, I've heard of salting a rabbit before, and you had one of those cards, but I don't know what salting the rabbit does. The guy was going to shoot him, and he's sprinkling salt on his what tail. I, what what I, does that I, mean? That, that helped you catch the rabbit. Oh. Uh, does oh, somebody okay. know what salting the rabbit means? No idea. <clears throat> I appreciate you letting me know that because that had me confused. Well, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay. Yeah, he said he did have a very fascinating life. He really was. And he was the master. I mean he was a master master of humor. He he, he and his friends played jokes on everybody around town and themselves. He spent a lot of time fishing. He uh got Picked up several times for fishing where he wasn't supposed to, and he was a great hunter. He was a marksman. He won several marksman contests, according to the Ottawa paper. Uh, Shav, did you want a copy of what that article? Yeah, if if possible, that'd be wonderful. I mean, I, if you could send a readable copy. Uh, to me, that would really be great, and I'll distribute it to our our members. It'd be <clears throat> neat to read about them. Well, I, w I, I wish I had a copy. A lot of the, again, a lot of this was used by local people as humor to send to their relatives and friends and make fun of the corn in their state or make fun of the hogs in their state or say, sorry, you can't grow uh, uh, sweet potatoes like this. Or you can't grow, uh, you know, cabbage. It was, it was just amazing. I collect humorous backs of these cards. And it's interesting when I show them to people, most everybody, once they see the front, they turn around and want to see the back. And for all of you postcard collectors there, it was interesting that recently uh, a guy that uh, collected the Yellowstone National Park postcards did a show for Hal. And it was interesting, the backs of all these cards, what they said about being in Yellowstone, how often they went and what they were telling their family and friends. I don't think I've had a non-postcard collector that's ever looked at them but hasn't turned them over and wants to read what's on the back. Yeah. That's why we like postmarks that we can identify the date and, as you know, the place and who, the, who sent them. And what I like, I collect uh, all Martin postcards from 1908. That's the first year he made them especially all of them for the first month that he made them. Most all of them were mailed from Ottawa, Kansas, uh, and sold right there in Ottawa. Uh, and they had his name, likely, on the, on the back of them. Yeah. Well, I, I can't thank you enough, uh, Morgan, for doing this for us. Uh, does anybody have any, any further questions to uh, ask of Morgan as long as he's here? Please go ahead and unmute yourself and do that, please. I was wondering, because I don't, maybe I just didn't hear it, but how many total postcards of these does he have? Uh, I'm sorry, Sal, would you uh, say the question again? How, how uh, many postcards are there in his series? How many postcards, what? She she was asking how many postcards total that uh, Dad Martin made over over the time that he was in business. I think that's correct. Okay, he made Rosa. about if you don't if you don't count the variations, he made about uh, well very quickly in 1910. He started knowing he was going to get out of postcards, and so he made a deal with a new company in Toronto called the Canadian Postcard Company. I went to Toronto. That's what I found out. The guy who ran Underwood and Underwood in Toronto for 10 years quit working for Underwood and Underwood and started the, the Canadian Postcard Company. <laughs> and he took, went to agreement with Martin, which we don't know what it was, 45 of Martin's cards. He put them out under the Canadian Postcard Company, Toronto, the same quality, the same handwriting. As far as I know, they were all made in Ottawa, and he distributed them in Canada, but they didn't say Martin. And then you'll find out there's about seven 
of Martin's images that were only made with Martin with the Canadian Postcard Company, and they were sold in Canada. So if you count them, I think there's about 60 Martin exaggerations. And then there's probably 25 uh, Indians. And then there's probably uh, 30, 35 of Ottawa, Kansas. Um, That's 120. How many total? That was 120 that you just. Yeah, that'd be about right. Or, let's see. Well, that's not counting the San Luis Valley, but uh, not, not counting. Uh, that's Ottawa, Kansas, uh, Indians, uh, then. Uh, Garden of the Gods. Well, was there eight or 10 of those or six or seven? I'm sorry, what? Garden of the Gods. How many oh, yeah. of those? Well, he copyrighted 10 of those. And we've only found no more than five. I think there's two of them that we know about three copies and two of them we know of one or two copies is all. Uh, there's a couple of them held by the Franklin County Historical Society, but I've never seen it, another copy. So there are probably 65 exaggerations, uh, maybe 25 Indians, 25 or 30 Ottawa, 10 Colorado. Springs, uh, I mean, the Garden of the Gods. Uh, it might be 30, 35 Ottawa. But, but a lot of those are just standard, you know, courthouse, schoolhouses. Uh, I mean, Martin was a fantastic photographer with, with nothing overly creative about what he did, besides the fact that all of his images were sharp and clear and uh, until he did exaggerations. And that's what I like about the exaggeration photographers. The, the best ones in Kansas were in Arkansas, Arkansas City. They were in uh, Colorado, uh, Garden City, Kansas. They were in uh, Norton, Kansas. The rest of them were in Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wisconsin. There was a guy in Wisconsin that put out a lot of them, but most all of them were small town photographers. Most of them. Uh, were there was one in in uh, Missouri, and he was just like Martin. He was in the photography business. He was in the movie business. You know, and the, and Mr. King from Nebraska, he was the same way. He did. He made automobiles. He had a moving. Uh, he had a mobile movie theater. He did exaggerations. You'll find that most of these uh, exaggeration guys were multi talented and. Uh, did a lot of things that were creative. You couldn't be just a standard photographer and no, have no sense of humor, no sense of creativity uh, and do exaggerations. Now, one of the best ever was Mr. Connard in the 1930s out in Garden City, Kansas. And he did 25 postcards showing dust storms. He did about a hundred showing exaggerations, all rabbits and jackrabbits and grasshoppers. Hmm. Uh, it said that he did them because he was about to go out of business as a photographer. And one night, a whole swarm of grasshoppers came into Gra Garden City, Kansas. And he went out and photographed some of them and started making images out of them. And he survived and became very successful. One of the only ones in the 1930s really doing thousands of real photo postcards. Any other, any other questions? Well, I guess I guess not, uh, Morgan. I I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this for us. I think we all uh, learned something. It was my mm. second uh, second chance of watching you uh, talk, and I I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one thing, Shav, is that uh, in about nineteen oh in about twenty in about nineteen ninety five, a guy by the, a guy. Uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Hal, that did the Martin checklist? Uh, Dennis McBurney. Dennis McBurney did a, worked with all of the large Martin collectors and he did a checklist the Wichita, under the auspices of the Wichita Postcard Club. Uh, Mar uh, Hal Ottaway has some. Uh, they're very excellent. You, you will find copies of almost every card in this checklist and it's the only checklist ever put out and there's a, a photograph of every card in there. Oh, so that's if great. you want one of those, it's very uh, great information. Uh, 
get a hold of Hal Holloway. Uh, there's going to be there's one also. Hal's also done the, the Wichita Club's also done some others, uh, and uh, it's very good if you're a collector or you you're wanting. And the, and then there's this, this guy in our Kansas City, George Cornish. George Cornish put out the first major exaggeration in Kansas in early 1907. So Martin is not the first guy that ever did exaggerations by any stretch of the imagination. The first ones were did about early 1907 and were done by a guy in our Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, he did Cornish. George and Cornish. And uh, there was a checklist of his and we're just working with a guy by the name of Phil McDaniels to put out a new expanded checklist of George Cornish that will be about a third larger of things that we found since then. So Kansas was probably the major uh, creator and publisher of exaggeration postcards. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Clarissa? Uh, yeah, are you considering putting this on a database as opposing a paper checklist? Uh, I'm sorry, am I, am I still what? Uh, instead of putting this on a paper checklist to have it on a database, on electronic checklist that can be searched a lot easier than a paper checklist. About Martin's technique? I'm no, not, just a he's postcard. Not hearing. He's not hearing you, Clarissa. I'm sorry. How, are, you I, hear, are you hearing me? Yeah. Uh, not very clearly how. What was she saying? She's asking if you're considering putting the Martin checklist out uh, online rather than printed and sold that way. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we've talked about it, Clarissa, but we have a small stack of, of uh, publications we'd love to sell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but whatever, uh, they're $15 a, a copy, and they're really nice paper, three-hole punch, so you can put them in your binder. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I think maybe they will be online like what you've done clarissa there's a there's a there's a there was a photographer in wampum wisconsin by the name of a.s johnson a.s johnson started making exaggerations in about 1908 also he made the first 15 or so he made some real photos but then he switched only to rather uh not very expensive paper ones and he had a nationwide distribution and he made more different images than anybody else. And there's, you can't probably find an animal or a crop that he didn't do an exaggeration of. There's a lady by the name of Johnson in Pennsylvania. She has done a hard copy uh, showing all of his cards. And she's put them all online. It's the only one that I know is all also online. If you look up Johnson exaggerations or you look up this... Uh, the lady's name is uh, the lady's name is Joyce Tice, and it's Alfred Stanley Johnson from Wampum, Wisconsin. Uh, his images are, are really very good. The big problem was he made them rather on cheap black and white paper, and they don't really come across like the Martin cards do, and uh, they easily damaged. Uh, but uh, he has over a probably 125 different images or 150 uh, uh, that he put out uh, all in Wampum. You can see that we have kind of a corner on some of the exaggeration artists, postcard producers here in Kansas. And we're so lucky to have Morgan Williams have been born here and then got so enthused and worked with his mother, who spent hours at the library, you know, going through newspaper files and before she passed away. But uh, Morgan's the daddy of, of exaggeration postcards all over the country. And uh, it's a treat to see you here tonight, Morgan. Thank you. Well, let's just mention that this Connor, uh, they call it, they call Dad Martin, Dad Martin, but the other great creator was Pop Connard 
in Garden City in the 1930s. And uh, our friend that did the Martin checklist, he and I just finished one on Pop Connery. He did, he did probably, uh, he, uh, he did, he, his most famous ones may be dust storms. He did 24 real photo cards showing Kansas dust storms in Kansas, Garden City and Dodge City. Then he did 75 exaggerations. And then he did some cards at the tower out in Genoa, Colorado. They're all real photos. He made them all in Garden City. And uh, McBurney and uh, I just did a printed checklist of his cards. And uh, he was another one. He was only one of about four in the dirty 30s that did exaggerations all showing grasshoppers and jackrabbits. A couple in South Dakota. And uh, his, we call his, uh, it's called dust storms, jackrabbits, and, uh, uh, and uh, grasshoppers. <laughs> oh, Morgan, thank you very much. It was a great presentation. I very really nice. was interested very in, in everything you had to say, and it was very well done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this Thanks, was John. great, Morgan. I appreciate it very much. And we're, we'll be looking forward to seeing you again soon. If not in Wichita, maybe you can come back and see us again and tell us about the backs of the postcards next time. That that would be fun. <laughs> well, Shab, I saw you guys had several thousand dollars in your treasury. <laughs> well, we got we got a couple of bucks can... in there, which is a heck of a lot that better than we used fun. to have. Al's probably got several thousand dollars in his treasure. We can get a bunch of postcard clubs together and find somebody that can put these online. Be a good idea. Would be a good idea. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, uh, no one final comment. You guys in California probably know of Mitchell postcards. Mitchell oh. also was an early exaggeration postcard guy. All of them are color. Most of them are rather simple images uh, of, a, of a fruit and vegetables on railroad cars. But Mitchell was a major creator of exaggeration images in California. Yep, yep. yep. I've seen a few of those too. Yep. Sure, sure. All right, everybody. If there's no more questions, I think we'll call it a day. And thank you very much again to Morgan. Thanks to all of you for coming. and. Uh, We'll be looking forward to seeing you next time.